This is a story about the search for absolute truth and also about the beauty of surrendering to something which is bigger than yourself unless you are as stubborn as I am. When I was a kid, absolute truth could be experienced every Sunday when you went to church. The church was always crowded, it looked beautiful around you and you learned that Jesus Christ died because of your sins, which sounded almost too good to be true. And that what you, is what you start wondering. Because my birthday was the name day of St. Nicholas, and when my mother told me that you actually did not exist, I wondered, well, maybe my parents are wrong, and he did exist, or maybe the other holy man of the church did also not exist. So what do you do? You start a study of history at the University of Leiden and you start a search for the historical truth behind the reality of the gods and the church. And after a few years I started a study to the historical sources of the life of Jesus Christ himself. And it appeared that there were no historical sources or descriptions on the life of Jesus, even those historians who wrote on the time of Jesus did not mention him. And there was only one vacant disputable source of a certain Flavius Josephus, and I ran into a radical theory, too radical for a university, and stopped my study, and became an entrepreneur. But in the past 25 years, I kept busy in my mind with this other theory and I wrote an historical novel about this theory and this life of Flavius Josephus and the role he played in the development of Christianity. And that Josephus, who was named Joseph Barmatea, was a controversial person with, who had many faces. The Romans raised a statue for him, although it was never found. The Jews saw him as a traitor of the Jewish cause in the war against the Romans. And the Christians saw him as the fifth evangelist. Well, my research led to the conclusion that he was more of the first evangelist. Here you see him writing on his historical works with his supervisors, Titus and Vespasian, standing in the dark. You see the Jewish gods next to him and the destruction of Jerusalem beneath him. But you also see a light shining upon him, and that was the light of the Essenes, the holy men living in white cloaks outside Jerusalem, living in groups of twelve, helping the poor, curing the sick, and waiting until God helped them to win the war of the good of Christos against evil. And Josephus, he lived among the Essenes for a few years. But he discovered they were too holy for him, and he decided to actually join the real war of evil against good. And he became one of the leaders of the Jews in the big war against the Romans in 66. And that war started as a big success. The leaders were welcomed as the new messiahs in the city. Coins were minted, dated with the year zero. But then the Romans completely destroyed the city and the country, and the Jews are still mourning at the last remaining wall of the destroyed temple. The Essenes were left mourning. How was it possible that God did not help them in winning the struggle against evil? How could they get any relief out of this misery? And now Joseph, Josephus, could help. Because Joseph, then called Joseph Barmatia, he was permitted to save three friends from the cross at the end of the war. And one of these friends actually survived the cross. And that reminds very much to the story of Joseph of Arimathea, who took Jesus from the cross in the Gospels. But Joseph did more. When he was captured by the Romans in the war, he predicted to the Roman general Flavius Vespasian that Vespasian was the Messiah predicted by the Jewish prophets. So when Vespasian became indeed an emperor, he decided to take Joseph to Rome 
and gave him the family name of Flavius. And the Flavian emperors so used the Jewish faith as their claim to power. But they wanted to change that faith in a way that it could be adapted to the Roman belief and could become a reach for non-Jews. So, when Josephus and his friends from the Essenes wrote down the story of how Jesus survived the cross, they were supported by the emperors, and they described how the war was won in the mind, and how the good of Christus became God of Christ, also for non-Jews. So, the Flavian emperors named a cousin as one of the first popes of this new belief of Christianity in the year 90. And in the end, Rome, the imperial city, became a city of God. And Christ was the conqueror in the mind and not so much in the world. And that was precisely the image that came out of these very first Gospels that were found 60 years ago in Egypt. A spiritual Christ that says, stand up and remember your original self. And that was the conclusion of my search for the absolute truth. You can search the good and the gods within yourself, because even that what is bigger than yourself can be in reach within yourself.